Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at solving rational quadratic equations. So these are, you know, kind of questions that I've seen pop up a couple of times. Um, so yeah, to get started, uh, just show you guys a couple of ways of doing this. Because one of the ways that you do it, um, it actually ends up with only one answer, while the other method actually gives you two answers. And I'll, and I'll show you guys what I mean by. All right, so we're going to be looking at that first question here. So our first step is we are going to be factorizing the numerator and the denominator. But before I do that, I just want to get rid of this question B. It will come back to question B um, at a later time, but um, those are the two questions, as I said, we're going to work on. So in this case, we're going to factorize. So this is method one we're doing, all right? So in method one, what we're doing is we're going to factorize the numerator. So we've got x plus 2 and x plus 1. And in the denominator, if we factorize it, we're going to get x plus 2 and x minus 1. And so now what we can say is this is now equal to 4. And we can actually get rid of the two common factors, which is x plus 2 and x plus 2. And what we have left over is x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals to 4. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to cross multiply. So we're going to get x plus 1 equals to 4 multiplied by x minus 1. And we're going to have to expand um, the bracket. So what we're going to get end up getting is we're going to end up getting 4x minus 4. And we're going to leave the left hand side as 0. So we're going to get 4x minus 4. And we're going to subtract minus x and minus 1. Yeah, it's looking good so far. So then we can actually say that 0 is equal to 3x minus 5. And if I keep going around to rearranging it, I'm going to get 3x is equal to positive 5. And I can say that x is equal to 5 over 3. So this is my one of my answers. And you're thinking, um, you know, yeah, this is this is great. I'm, I've actually got one answer, but um, I want to show you guys the other method when you do this. This there's a second method you do it, and you're actually going to end up with two different answers. So this is the second way of doing this same question. All right. So instead of actually factorizing the two, um, the numerator and the denominator, what you're gonna, what I can show you guys is I could actually rearrange it. So I'm going to get x squared plus three x plus two equals uh, 4 times x squared plus x minus 2. So all I've done is I've just gotten rid of the uh, denominator onto the other side. And at this point, I can actually expand the brackets. So I'm going to get 4x squared plus 4x minus 8. And then I'm going to rearrange um, so that all the terms are in one side. So I've got 4x squared plus 4x minus 8. And because I'm bringing all this to the other side, it's going to become minus x squared minus 3x and minus 2, which means this simplifies now to 3x squared plus x minus 10. Now, at this point, uh, as I told you guys before, you are doing level 2 algebra here. If you're doing the level 2 algebra, then you guys are allowed to use a graphics calculator. Now, if you don't have a graphics calculator, um, so you can actually factorize this using that long method that I've done in, back in level one, or you could also use the quadratic formula to get the two answers. But having a graphics calculator does have a little bit of advantage in like doing stuff like this so that you can kind of just do it really quickly. So what have we got? Polynomial, degree two, and the values are a is equal to three, b is equal to one, and c equals minus 10. Now, as you can see, there are two answers here. So you've got 1.6666, which is the same thing as saying 5 over 3, which is shown in the calculator at the, um, how do I put it? In the, in, I don't know if you guys can see the mouse here, but it's actually in the screen. It is at the right bottom. You can see the 5 over 3 as a fraction. And then you've got your second answer, which happens to be negative 2. So our two answers here that we're getting is x is equal to 5 over 3 or negative 2. Now, here's the thing. 
when you do get two answers, uh, it is always a good idea to just put it back in the equation just to see if they work out. Now we know that five over three is what we got in method one. So we can almost guarantee that five over three is actually one of the answers. But if you're doing method number two, you actually have to prove um, that both of these values actually work out. So um, you could put five over three in there, uh, in the equation. So what are you gonna get is five over three squared plus three times five over three uh, plus two, and that's all divided by five over three squared plus five over three minus two and now we want to check if, whether this is equal to positive four or not now a really quick way of doing this in the calculator is instead of typing all of that five over three all the time what you could do is go into menu go into run mode and i know i've done this with answer method before but there is a little shortcut that you can actually do so what you can do is you can actually click on five over three and there's a little arrow here just above the on button and below the tan button towards the right side um, I hope you guys can see it it's below the tan button so you basically go 5 over 3 and I want to put that as alpha um, I don't know let's call it a for example so we can put it as alpha a basically that means we've actually stored the if we click on alpha a uh, sorry alpha and a you actually end up with a is equal to 5 over 3 so by doing this, then what we can just do is just click on alpha a squared. Um, I actually want to put the brackets in there first because I want to do the numerator first. So alpha squared plus 3a plus 2. And then now that's divided by uh, alpha a. That's a squared plus a minus two and we want to know whether this equals to positive four and that does equal to positive four so we can actually say yep this actually works out but if we were to do the same thing with um, negative two so what we're going to do is negative two squared uh, plus three times negative two plus two and that's divided by negative two squared uh, plus negative two minus two and let's see what happens with this case so the reason why this is really um, the using the a works out is now what you can do is you can actually put down uh, you can actually uh, you should be able to do it I hope it works we can actually put negative two as a so then what happens is if I go a now a should be negative two then what I can do is I can press up and go to my equation and instead of typing it all over again I can just click on that and as you can see it's coming up with a maths error and you're wondering oh did I do something wrong actually you didn't do anything wrong uh, it is actually correct that you're not supposed to get an answer um, the reason you're not supposed to get an answer is because if you think about it right here when it says x plus 2 if we substitute x as negative 2 so what's going to happen is this part here is going to become 0 and remember that you can't actually divide a number by 0 so therefore, we actually have to say that x, it can't be negative 2 because it doesn't actually give a solution. Cool. So as you can see, that's why we do um, the second method more than the first method because the second method actually gives you guys those two answers. All right, so let's have a look at it quickly at question 2. So with question 2, obviously, I'm not going to do it with um, the method 1. So I'm going to do method two. So I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 4 times x times x plus 1. So I'm going to start expanding the bracket and I'm going to get 4x squared plus 4x and I'm going to rearrange everything. So I've got 4x squared plus 4x and then we've got minus x squared minus 4x minus 3. So what we're going to end up with is 3x squared minus 3. Now with this one, we can actually see that we don't really need to use the calculator because we can rewrite this as 3x squared minus 1. Uh, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So what we're going to end up with is 0 equals x squared minus 1. Now at this point, we can say, therefore, x is equal to uh, plus or minus 1. Now the reason I did that really quickly was because I can say that this is going to be x minus 1 
times x plus 1 equals to 0. So as you can see, my two values are going to be negative 1 and positive 1. Now, we want to do this real quickly, right? We, we don't want to be doing this whole thing in the calculator and it's like you want to do it real quickly. I guess the easiest way to do it is by looking at the denominator. All right. And here, right here, you can see that how this is x plus 1. So for x plus 1, if I actually put if I put x is equal to 1, then that bracket is going to be 1 plus 1, which means I'm going to get a 2. And of course, the rest of the values, they're all going to give a real number. So I don't really have to worry about it. But here's the thing. If I put x equals to negative 1, then that green colored bracket is going to be negative 1 plus 1, which actually equals to 0. And straight away, because the denominator has a 0 in it, you can't actually divide by it. So therefore, we have to actually say that x is equal to 1 and that x can't be equal to negative 1. All right, guys, that's basically it for this uh, little concept here. As always, guys, don't forget to like this video, uh, share this video, and also subscribe to keep up with the latest content. Now, there should be some playlists popping up. Check them out. Great revision material. And as always, thank you for watching.